Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus. And check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4. As well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video. What's going on guys? Bangle again here coming back at you with another video. Today we are back. This time starting a new series which is going to be the off-season preview. Or off-season plan, schedule, whatever you'd like to say. For each team in the NFL, we're going to start out in draft order, which of course gives us the Arizona Cardinals. The way it's going to go is we're going to start with re-signing, we're going to head to free agency, and then we're going to do the draft. I think it's a pretty straightforward thing. Uh, I'm going to sign a couple of free agents, and there will be a lot more re-signings probably and a lot more signings, but we're just going to stick with a couple of the bigger names that you guys are probably familiar with. Uh, and then as far as re-signings go, that's for free agency. As far as re-signings go, um, some of the players that I think are going to be good depth players or potentially even impact players as, uh, as we kick things off. But let's go ahead and start off with the Arizona Cardinals. And that would start off with re-signings. So the first re-signing I have is Larry Fitzgerald. This is the backbone of the Cardinals franchise. You could say he's probably their best player ever. And I don't even think that's a stretch at all. The Cardinals have been around for a while. Uh, they're one of the uh, the first teams, actually. Uh, they moved around quite a bit. I know they were, you know, the Phoenix Cardinals for a time. I know they were actually the St. Louis Cardinals for a time, um, which I guess would be an interesting situation with the baseball team. But the Cardinals have been around forever. And yet here we are, a team in the modern era with a player like Larry Fitzgerald that you can, I think, definitively say this is their best player ever. They were even in Chicago early on. The Cardinals have been around forever. They got uh, introduced to the NFL in 1920. So they've been around for a while, and I think without doubt Larry Fitzgerald is their best player. So I think you're going to re-sign Larry Fitzgerald, keep him in a Cardinals uniform, uh, until the day that he retires or dies, whichever one comes first, which honestly, given his age, he might just die. Could happen. J.J. Nelson is going to be re-signed as well. Basically, speed receiver, also depth guy, special teamer. I think that's his value right now. That doesn't mean you go out and you don't sign a receiver, as we're going to get to a little bit later, or draft a receiver. But J.J. Nelson, I think, is a good depth re-signing. Also can make an impact on special teams. Phil Dawson, hook him horns. You're going to re-sign a kicker. He's been solid for the Cardinals. He's a good kicker. He's old now, so he could use to retire. But if he wants to keep kicking, which I think there is certainly potential for that, I want to keep him with the Arizona Cardinals. Gerald Hodges is going to be re-signed. Gerald Hodges hasn't been bad for the Cardinals. He just hasn't been overly good. Their team was disappointing, but the Cardinals were also riddled with injury. They had so many players that were injured this year. And basically for me... It was between Dayon Buchanan and Gerald Hodges to see who actually uh, would get re-signed, who would remain. And I think the Cardinals are just at that point where they're ready to move on from Dayon Buchanan and say, hey, uh, we're going to try out some new guys. We kind of like the hybrid money backer role that you played here for a while, but it's just it's time to move on. We're going to go with a different player. You haven't been fantastic, and I think... I think we're going to move on. So I really don't think the Cardinals are going to re-sign Dayon Buchanan. It certainly could happen, but I just I just don't see it. I think you need to prioritize re-signing Trey Boston. He is one of the most underrated players in the league, really. And I know I've said that about Akeem Hicks and uh, Chris Jones, but Trey Boston really is. He's not to the level of those players. He's not as good. He's not one of the you know top five players at his position, but he's a solid top 15 safety for sure. He's definitely better than than what most teams have at that position and he's a guy that's not getting paid very much i think you definitely need to re-sign him he's been good for the cardinals you recently came out and assigned dj swearinger we'll talk about him a little bit later uh and i think that'd be a really good safety tandem keep it trey boston dj swearinger and have buddha baker play slot corner which is what he's been playing and he's very good at that role so why not keep him there i also have them re-signing ode abushi this is a guy that's moved around a lot in his career, never really staying on one team for more than a year or two. However, I think his best season of his career was probably this last year uh, in Arizona. 
the Cardinals offensive line was obviously very poor, but again, injuries really took a toll on this team. But I think Odeabushi as a fill-in has actually played better than than what Mike Iapati gave you, or, or Mike Iapati, or even Justin Pugh when he was healthy. I think Odeabushi is someone that you absolutely need to re-sign. Maybe you go out, you upgrade that in the draft, which we'll get to a little bit later as I, I keep uh, hinting at. But I think Odeabushi has played well enough to deserve uh, a one, two, maybe even a three-year contract extension. He's only 27 years old. And Joe Barksdale, I have getting re-signed as well. He played pretty well. Another player that probably isn't fantastic and has never really been a great player, but had one of the best seasons of his career. He's going to be cheap, and you can go out and get younger in the draft. I think Joe Barksdale is going to be fine at right tackle. And worst comes to worst with, you know, Odeabushi and uh, Joe Barksdale, they're just depth at offensive line because offensive line goes down all the time. They're always getting injured. Why not secure some type of a backup plan? Joe Barksdale averaged less than a million per year last year. Odeabushi averaged less than 800K per year in terms of uh, salary. So these are not going to be expensive players. They're going to be players that you can easily retain, and I would not be shocked if um, Odeabushi and Joe Barksdale both got re-signed, as well as Rodney Gunter, another like solid player that's underrated. A lot of players are underrated. I mean, they're just names that you don't hear about. He's 27, got paid 700K last year. I think he's probably going to be looking more uh, in the 2 million per year range. I think that's the type of player he is. But he is pretty good, and he was one of the bright spots on that Cardinals defense that wasn't very good, in my opinion. He was actually not bad. Definitely, you're going to want to re-sign Rodney Gunter. He probably won't be too expensive, but that's going to cap off our re-signings. Let's go ahead and move on to the new additions in free agency. We're going to start out with DJ Swearinger. Okay, I know. This already happened. DJ Swearinger already came back to the Cardinals. He's under contract for the next few years. It's fine. I did want to include it here in case any of you Cardinals or probably non-Cardinals fans didn't hear about this because DJ Swearinger got cut late in the season by the Washington Redskins. So... And he didn't play with the Cardinals at the end of the year, as far as I know. So this is something that could have gone under the radar for a lot of you guys. DJ Swearinger is back in Arizona now. I did want to make this a point of, uh, of note that he is back in Arizona. He will probably start at one of the safety positions next year. And hopefully, Trey Boston's next to him. Next move is going to be bringing in Jordan Hicks from the Philadelphia Eagles. Jordan Hicks is a really, really solid player. No bias, of course. Texas Longhorn, hook him horns. Uh, but Jordan Hicks has been really, really good. He's a versatile player, can play both inside and outside, has been a great tackler, but specifically a fantastic zone cover corner, or cover corner, cover linebacker, excuse me, had five interceptions back in 2016 and then was injured for a lot of 2017. And that's really but, uh, what has been plaguing Jordan Hicks for his career, even dating back to Texas and then his first year in the league and then his third year in the league in 2017. But aside from injury, Jordan Hicks has been a really, really solid player. Certainly an above average middle linebacker. Not sure what his contract would look like based on his age, which would be his next season would be 27 in 2019. You're probably looking at him getting, I would say, maybe upwards of $5 million, $5, 6000000 million per year on a three or four year deal. Maybe with a, a team option in there because of injury or something like that. You might be able to get him at a cheaper rate because of injury. But Jordan Hicks, when he's healthy, is a very, very solid linebacker. Would be a much needed addition and improvement to this Arizona Cardinals linebacking core. Next up, I have Kevin White, which is kind of a weird one. Kevin White has been inconsistent, to say the least. And it's really been because he can't stay healthy. And it's not even whether he's a bust at this point anymore. He's looking at bust in the rearview mirror. Kevin White is uh, extremely disappointing because he was a guy at West Virginia that was exceptional. Arguably the best receiver in that class coming out. And he hasn't started more than five games in his entire career. Doesn't have more than 300 receiving yards in his career. Has never scored a touchdown. He can't stay healthy. He cannot stay healthy for the life of him, which in my opinion, means that he's going to be very, very cheap. And for a Cardinals receiving core that features ancient Larry Fitzgerald, sad but true, uh, and outside of that, Christian Kirk, who is good, but, I mean, there's nothing else there. We have him re-signing J.J. Nelson, but this is a team without any real relevant threats, in my opinion. Christian Kirk was injured, so that's kind of a weird one. 
But outside of that, Chad Williams at receiver, Trent Sherfield, and J.J. Nelson. That's not a fantastic receiving core. You need to get better. Kevin White is going to be low risk, high reward potential. Got to surround Josh Rosen with some talent. This is a first round talent that if he can stay healthy and develop, I mean, it's a steal. But the question is, is he going to stay healthy? Is he going to perform well for you? The answers, unfortunately, are probably not and maybe, which is, is not great. But I think it's worth the risk. You're probably looking at less than a million per year for Kevin White, which is essentially nothing. And the last one is going to be Derek Shelby. Purely a rotational player, in my opinion. He's been solid. He's been good-ish. Uh, didn't really do much in 2018, but he is a player that's gotten multiple sacks in years before. As I said, though, he's purely a rotational player. He's a pretty good run defender, but that's all you're going to get out of him. Put him in on those run defense downs, which uh, I think will maybe make an impact for you. I don't have the Cardinals re-signing, uh, as we talked about a little bit earlier with uh, the, the re-signing of the players I left out, like didn't go after Daniel Buchanan. I don't have them uh, re-signing uh, Marcus Golden. I, the name escaped me for a minute. I apologize. Because Marcus Golden had a breakout year, and then he hasn't really done much else in the entire rest of his career. So even though he had 12 and a half sacks in 2016, he had zero in 2017. He only played four games. And then this past year in 2018, as a 27 year old, he played 11 games, only had two and a half sacks, uh, was pretty underwhelming. And I do think he's going to fetch some money on the open market. I do, because at the end of the day, with Marcus Golden, I mean, you have a young ish player that's shown flashes in the past. I just don't think the Cardinals would want to want to re sign him and pay that money. I think another team would be fooled into doing that. I know. A few years back, maybe 2014, 2015, when the Giants went after a bunch of free agents, one of them was O'Brien Schofield, who they were going to offer like $4 million plus per year on. I think it was like two years, $8 million for O'Brien Schofield, who never did anything, but they you know, thought he had potential. It's kind of the same deal with Marcus Golden, but he's shown that he can do it before. Double-digit sacks uh, in just two or three years ago. So he, I think he's going to get some money on the open market. The question is, are the Arizona Cardinals going to want to pay that? I think the answer is probably not. So we're going to get let Marcus Golden go and replace him with Derek Shelby, who will probably be the same production for cheaper. It's my guess. So now that free agency is covered, we're moving on into the draft. And I do have a trade, as you guys can see on the screen. This will be the Jacksonville Jaguars trading up to number one. I'm going to assume that they're going to take Dwayne Haskins, but that's pretty irrelevant for this video. The details of the trade are going to be, in this case, the Cardinals trade number one overall to Jacksonville, and then Jacksonville trades a first-round pick this year, which is number seven overall, a second-round pick this year, which is number seven overall in the second round, and a first-round pick next year in 2020. So the Jacksonville Jaguars are giving up a lot of very valuable picks in order to move up here uh, six spots to take maybe their franchise quarterback, so they don't even need the picks at that point, we'll say. So those are the details of the trade for me. I think it makes it pretty easy. Not a whole lot going on. Just a first this year, next year, and a second. And with number seven overall, I'm going to have the Arizona Cardinals selecting Cleveland Farrell, an edge rusher out of Clemson. I really, really like Cleveland Farrell. He's one of my favorite players in the draft. He's someone that's been super, super effective for the Clemson Tigers, his career there. He's been part of what has made that defensive line the best in the country. I, I think almost without question. Had bunch of multi-sack games this year two against A&M two against Georgia Southern uh two against Duke but just because those are some smaller schools aside from Texas A&M doesn't mean he hasn't been productive in other games even in the national championship last night as I record this against Alabama he was super effective in that game getting pressure didn't record a sack but made some plays had a sack against Notre Dame in uh in the Cotton Bowl which was the first of the college football playoff had a sack against Boston College. He's someone that loves to get after the quarterback at Florida State as well, at Wake Forest. He's someone that has been the best defensive end in the ACC, in my opinion, by a wide margin. I like Zalen, or Zach Allen quite a bit out of Boston College, but Cleland Farrell, in my opinion, is in a class of his own. Nick Bosa is very, very good. I think Cleland Farrell is, uh, is getting underrated a little bit. I think he certainly deserves to be a top 10 pick 
probably even top five. But if he falls to seven, this is something that the Cardinals absolutely have to do. They have to pull the trigger. Upgrade edge. You cannot have what you have right now starting. It'd just be absolutely terrible to run out with the same group. Chandler Jones needs someone on the other side. He does. And even if you sign Derek Shelby, Derek Shelby is a rotational depth player. He is not really intended to be that starting guy. With Fontarius Dora, who has been absolutely ineffective at left end for the Cardinals this past year, you need another option. You can't run out what you did this past year. And if Marcus Golden leaves, which is what we have going on, what are you left with? Benson Mayoa? You can't have that. Robert Kimdichie is an interior player. And you have Corey Peters, who's a little bit older at defensive tackle, Rodney Gunter. But if you have the combo of Robert Kimdichie and Rodney Gunter, even with Corey Peters in there as well, I think that's a really good combo of three players, especially if Kimdichie can improve to the player that, uh, you know, a lot of people thought he could be. I don't really think you need to go defensive tackle here. So we are going edge. We are upgrading uh, their edge rusher. And that is going to be with Cleland Farrell, defensive end out of Clemson. With the first pick in round two, have them going DK Metcalf, receiver out of Ole Miss. This is someone that could sneak into the first round. It wouldn't entirely shock me if he did. Didn't have an incredible 2018 season. Uh, only 26 catches for 569 yards, five touchdowns. So a little bit disappointing from him. But then again, he also didn't play a whole lot. The... Uh, second half of the season he just was inactive he didn't play in November didn't play in December he only played at the start of the year so that's going against him really but he's shown flashes in the past he really has last year in 12 games which was uh, almost double what he played this year of seven had 646 uh, yards on 39 catches seven touchdowns he's a red zone threat with pretty good speed and even though his stats aren't all the way there I think that's maybe a reason that's going to hold him back from going in the first round. Could go at the top of the second here as we have. Um, he's a good player. He's shown absolute flashes on, this, on, the, on the field. When he's been playing, he's been super effective. It's just about missing time with him. He's a red zone threat with good speed, deep threat even. Route running is not the sharpest, but he has good hands. Again, like one of the best jump ball receivers in this class probably. DK Metcalf is a very good player that I think probably will be available at this pick for the Cardinals. What's the name of the game? with a rookie quarterback and he'll be in his second year at this point but you have to surround young quarterbacks with weapons what do the cardinals lack on the offense side of the ball well a lot of things offensive line is a big one but they don't have a lot of offensive weapons larry fitzgerald sure if christian kirk can develop and, and be good okay that's maybe another but you don't have anything else it's not like larry fitzgerald is a prime number one anymore and it's not like christian kirk um, is an absolute stud either. Larry Fitzgerald is going to be 36 for next season. If he decides to even play at all, he might end up retiring. I'm not even sure at this point. Uh, and you don't really have anything at tight end. I like the running back. David Johnson's good, but uh, I think you need a pure number one big threat for Josh Rosen. Get a stud receiver out there. I think DK Metcalf out of Ole Miss is exactly what you're looking for. Next up with the Jaguars pick, I'm going to have the Arizona Cardinals get another offensive weapon, and that is Noah Fant, tight end out of Iowa. Uh, also, I said Farrell for Cleveland. It's definitely Furl. I don't know why it is, and it's going to take us from getting used to. It's Cleveland Furl, like referral. Um, but yeah, we're on Noah Fant now, tight end out of Iowa. He's been consistent, actually got recruited as a defensive lineman, as I found out tonight, which is pretty interesting. But in his 2017 season as a sophomore, he was fantastic. Only caught 30 passes, but stretched that to 494 receiving yards and 11 touchdowns. 11 touchdowns. That's absolutely insane. On 30 catches, to be that much of a red zone target is phenomenal. His speed is fantastic. He caught nine more balls this year than he did in 2017. 39 catches for 518 yards, seven touchdowns, with now like teams knowing about him. Noah Fant, his freshman year, didn't really do much at all. Uh, barely played. Nine catches for 70 yards and a touchdown. And then maybe he took the Big Ten by storm in in his sophomore season. And that's why his average per catch was a little bit more. 11 touchdowns. Maybe you can explain that away. 
But seven touchdowns again this last season. Fantastic for a tight end. 500 plus yards in that offense. Noah Fant is a surefire difference maker and another target for Josh Rosen. Something I think is greatly needed. They have nothing at tight end. They really don't. The Arizona Cardinals just really lack weapons. It can't be Jermaine Gresham. It can't be Ricky Seals-Jones. Jermaine Gresham, who will be 31 for next year, by the way. It just cannot happen. Cannot happen. I know another tight end they have in there is Gabe Holmes. These are not starting caliber players, in my opinion. John Phillips as well. Like th These guys are, are blocking and rotational tight ends at best. You need a surefire weapon. And if you have an offense, which we'll get to at the end here, with Larry Fitzgerald, Christian Kirk, DK Metcalf lining up, Kirk and Fitzgerald will play in the slot, and then you have Noah Fant at tight end, David Johnson in the backfield. We're going to upgrade that offensive line a little bit with his next pick. Josh Rosen is going to have a, have a lot easier of a time, especially with the new coach in Cliff Kingsbury, which happened today. That was a big signing. In round three, I finally had the Arizona Cardinals taking offensive line because I think it's going to be a deep class. I don't think there's going to be a ton of guys going uh, at the top based on their talent. And, I mean, that, with that being said, that's a, another reason why they could rise up because of how few there are um, with pure top talent. You can see guys getting elevated into the first round. Like, outside of Jonah Williams, who didn't even look great in the national championship, you don't really have a ton there. David Edwards is one of the better offensive tackles in this class. And I think if he falls to round three, which, again, I think there's a pretty good chance that happens, uh, given the way this offensive line class will work out, I think it's a very good pick for the Arizona Cardinals, someone that you can just plug and play, get him in there, have him make a difference. I know DJ Humphreys has been very disappointing for Cardinals fans as of late, so maybe you could play him at left tackle, could play him at right tackle, uh, and move Barksdale over to left side. Either way, you need to upgrade tackle. DJ Humphreys has not been it, right? So I think with the addition of uh, David Edwards, you improve your offensive line. Again, lessening the workload on Josh Rosen. And this could maybe go from a bottom of the league offense to near the top. I don't know. I mean, if you improve all these spots and Josh Rosen takes that step and Cliff Kingsbury institutes a new and great offense, I mean, you're going to be you're gonna be cooking with a fire there. You're pretty good. Round four, we're going offensive line again. Connor McGovern. The reason why I like this pick a lot is is because Connor McGovern is a versatile player. I have him listed here uh, probably as offensive guard, but he's a guy that has experience playing center at Penn State. He's a versatile guy that you can move around. Maybe you don't like Mason Cole at center. Well, maybe here's your future starting center in Connor McGovern. Maybe you don't like Micah Potty, who's leaving here, and maybe you don't like Ode Abushi. So Connor McGovern can be a rotational player uh, that can start out as depth, fill a number of different positions, left guard if Justin Pugh goes down again, or center if you need him to start a center if he's better than Mason Cole or if Mason Cole's not getting the job done or right guard uh, if if Ode Ibushi isn't getting it done so this could be a very good move for the Arizona Cardinals get a versatile offensive lineman that can fill a lot of needs so I really don't mind that pick here in the fourth I think it's pretty good value round five we're going Rock Yasin cornerback out of Temple physical cornerback uh, pretty good athlete for for Temple and bottom line here is it's cornerback depth. Your cornerbacks are not tremendous out of Patrick Peterson. So it is a position potentially that you need to upgrade in other ways. This is really just a depth pick as a lot of these are going to be uh, in the later rounds. Round six, Dakota Allen. You maybe saw him on last chance you. Well, he's a versatile player. Can play outside linebacker, can play inside linebacker. Would fit the Cardinals scheme very, very well with what they like to do. This could potentially be your Dayon Buchanan replacement. Fill that money backer role. Really, really good zone cover linebacker. I know it's kind of like a gimmick because he was on this reality TV show, but he's been solid for Texas Tech. And I think that the only reason he's not going a lot higher is because of that um, community college experience and, and the potential off the field concerns, which are legitimate. Seems like a great kid from watching the TV show, but you, you never really know. So I think his stock is going to be hurt a little bit because of that. So if he's available in the sixth round, I think it's going to be very good value. Cardinals obviously have shown that they're okay to take players with potential off-the-field concerns. Look at Robert Camdichi. So Dakota Allen, I think, makes a lot of sense here in round six. Fills a need 
this is a potentially a really really good value pick as well based on him being probably a a second or third round talent at the highest and if you can get him in the sixth round you know you might as well right last pick here is going to be tyron johnson for oklahoma state was probably the number two receiver for oklahoma state this past year i like tylen wallace a little bit more but i don't believe he is eligible until next year tyron johnson on the seventh i think is pretty good value Caught 53 passes this past year for 845 yards and seven touchdowns. It really was a career year for him. He has good size at six foot one, 193, and pretty much what it's going to come down to for him is he's going to be a rotational player. He's going to be depth, probably play a lot of special teams his first year or two. Uh, maybe he can play a gunner. He's got decent speed. He's six foot one, about 200 pounds. He can get in the end zone. He's a decent player. Uh, and it, round seven is probably where he's going to find a home. He's going to be a later round pick, I would guess, especially considering how many wide receivers there are in this class. So Tyron Johnson to the Arizona Cardinals here, rounding out their draft. So we'll take a look at their offense now. This is basically what it would look like on the field. So DK Metcalf, maybe out wide. Larry Fitzgerald in the slot. Christian Kirk can rotate in as well. I know Fitzgerald and Kirk both have experience playing in the slot. DK Metcalf has played a bit in the slot as well. AJ Brown really was that guy at Ole Miss. I know Demarcus Lodge also took reps in the slot, but DK Metcalf on occasion would, and he's been effective from that position, but he's really an outside receiver. And you have three guys that could potentially be outside receivers for you. A lot of versatility there. Larry Fitzgerald played a lot of the slot this past year. I think Christian Kirk is probably more of that slot receiver. I think it's where he's going to find, you know, pay dirt and be the most effective. But as you can see with players that either did not play much this past year due to injury or are new additions to the team, I do have with no grade and pink under. I took this from Pro Football Focus so you can see the other positions and how they graded out. But DK Metcalf at wide receiver. David Edwards is going to play left tackle. Upgrade over DJ Humphreys. Justin Pugh back at left guard. I know he was signed to the team last year. Didn't play a whole lot, if anything, because of injury. And then you have Mason Cole, Ode Abushi, Joe Barksdale. Obviously the right guard and right tackle. Both got extensions. Uh, by my assessment here with this offseason plan. Noah Fant starting at tight end. Talked about Christian Kirk. And then, of course, the young quarterback Josh Rosen and David Johnson makes up a pretty good backfield at quarterback and halfback. On the defensive side of the ball, you're going to notice that there are uh, 12 positions here because I wanted to show slot corner because that is going to be a thing that happens quite often. And with the addition of DJ Swearinger at strong safety, Trey Boston going to stay on that free side. You got Jordan Hicks on the inside, going to be fantastic, which means Gerald Hodges move over to right outside linebacker. We did offer him an extension over Daniel Buchanan. Not ready for Dakota Allen to take that spot just yet. Hassan Reddick can stay at that Sam linebacker spot on that left side. I think that's going to be very good. And then you have Patrick Peterson at CB1. Buda Baker in that slot role can potentially play on the outside as well. David Amerson, I don't think, is a free agent until 2020. It, it were different from different sites I looked at, which is weird. Some said at the end of 2019, some said at the end of 2020. We're going to go off the basis that it is 2020. I really could not find a definitive answer, but I do trust SpotRack more than uh, the other website, which is where I found out a lot of these contract um, details. So that's their cornerback group. Amerson Baker at the slot role, which he has played. Um, that's what he did all of last year in that Tyra Matthew role with the Arizona Cardinals. Patrick Peter Peterson on the outside is obviously a tremendous player. And then the defensive line, you have Chandler Jones, fantastic on that edge spot. And then you have Corey Peters, Rodney Gunter at both defensive tackle spots. Rotate Robert Kimdichie in there. And of course, Cleveland Farrell, who you drafted with your top pick at number seven overall after the trade. And you also signed Derek Shelby, another rotational player. So this team is very much improved for the Cardinals. I think this is a team that actually could win some games and would definitely compete in the NFC East or NFC West, excuse me. But that is going to do it for me here, guys. I want to thank you so much for watching the video. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you want to see more of these, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.